So, welcome back, dudes, dudettes, theys, theydettes, and everyone in between. Um, my hair looks a mess. It's pretty amazing. Uh, so, there's a book that I read, um, between the awful book and, uh, the next one. And it's called Plague the Middle America, no, the Mid-America Zombie Half-Breed Experiment. And, um... It's about uh, zombie hunters. The guy, there's a guy, his name is Tom. And Tom is a zombie hunter, but he is a, like, novice zombie hunter almost. And um, he goes to, like, for some reason, all of the zombies, I guess they were created, I don't know if it was a virus or if they were created. All of the zombies have been quarantined on an island that's not very far from the mainland. I think think it's somewhere in New York the geography had me very confused but like so they go to this island and there's like a gift shop on this island and they're like selling zombies and there are zombies available to have sex with it's all very weird and um Tom is looking for his little sister because He's blamed for her getting bitten and taken away by the zombies, which I don't think is entirely fair because he was like 12 when that happened and she was like 7. Okay, but they're looking for her and he sees this girl named Penelope who is kind of like a zombie, but not really. Or, like, she carries the she carries the virus, but she's not like... Like, it's weird to talk about. Um, her owner calls her Kitten which is very disturbing, and um, her name is Penelope. Tom finds that out through some record hunting, I guess. And the town falls, obviously, because I don't know why you would keep a bunch of zombies in... Wh whose idea was this? But, uh, yeah. And then, um... The entire time I was reading the book, I was just telling myself that if Tom fell in love with this literal zombie girl, I was going to start screaming my head off because no, no. And also, did I mention no? Um, yeah. The zombies have venom sacks, like they're fucking spiders or something like that. And I shouldn't have said that I don't like spiders. And like, they can, they can remove them, but the zombies are still hungry. That's the dumbest thing. It's like a snake. <laughs> Venom sacks. And if you remove that, they can just tear you to death. You don't actually turn into a zombie. Um, so, Penelope is actually an experiment. I think they were looking for a cure. I can't exactly tell, but there are a bunch of other girls like her. They do find Tom's sister, but they don't end up being able to take her with, take her with them. And they go to, um, they go to a place where they're able to, like, call for help because they can't get off the island. Tom's brother abandoned him, by the way. And, uh, Tom is, like, the son of some senator, something like that. So they take him and Penelope, and I don't remember if there are any other survivors. I don't think there are. I think it's just the two of them. They take them, and they go, and that's where the story ends. It was a pretty good book. I just really didn't want Tom to fall in love with that actual zombie. Um, yeah. Whenever there are books and they're like, this vampire werewolf is falling in love with a human girl and the vampire werewolf doesn't actually start torturing them, I get really angry because vampires and werewolves, if the other person is a human, no. Anyway book I actually want to talk about them and try and spend less than six minutes on is called Raven's Mark. This is a reverse harem book. If you are unaware of what a harem is, it is when a person, usually a dude, will have like I'd say three or more girls that he's actively sleeping with. Not in like an orgy style, just like one at a time, but he has them all at his disposal. Um, I... I like this book. It's called an erotic... It's it, After the erotic thriller, this book was a much needed refresher because, man, that book was bad. Anyway, it's not it's not too reverse harmony yet. Like, we meet the boys and we meet the girl. And that's kind of it for this book. It's pretty short. All of the books at the beginning are pretty short. 
Um, so her name is Morgan, and she has been accepted to a prestigious school group in New York City. She's, like, from, like, a small town place. She's writing a story about an orphan, and, uh, I'll come back to that because it's, it's relevant. Um, she has a friend named Ryan who she wants to bone, but he's a dick, so she doesn't before she leaves. And then she goes to the school... Not not to the school yet. She goes to the house first because the scholarship she got for the school and the prestigious group are two separate things. So she, um, Morgan also is an orphan. She doesn't know how her parents died. She's blocked out that part of her memory. And she arrives in New York and she's a mess. And then we meet Dylan. He is a history major in the scholarship group. Place is pretty lit. It's like a giant mansion. Yeah, immediately I knew it was probably not affiliated with the school in any sort of fashion. Because where in New York City, because they, they don't say which part of New York City, but they specifically say New York City. Where in New York City are you going to put a mansion in what I assume to be probably Manhattan? In like, I think this book was written like recently. So where are you going to put a new mansion in Manhattan of all places? Dylan gets a short chapter talking about Morgan returning, so already the supernatural shit is starting. It's pretty good. Um, the boys are drawn to her and they have to protect her and her necklace. She wears a necklace. It's actually a protection charm. And uh, he's also really horny for her because they need to discuss her virginity, which is a good thing, apparently. Um, she does stay a virgin by the end of the story, by the way. Um... Her, her memory is also intact because of the story. So the story that she's writing is actually about herself. She just doesn't know. Um, I know where the plot is going by this point. So, but the journey was still pretty fun. It was a little bit weird, but I think that's just because it's like the first book and it's six books. And I feel like, I feel like it should, by the time I read book four, I will probably know if this should have been three books rather than six. Because it didn't, I mean, the cliffhanger, I guess the cliffhanger was a good point to leave off. I didn't like it. Anyway, um, all the boys are described. Dylan lives in the attic. He is rugged with muscles. Sam is down the hall. He's a model type. Sharp, according to Morgan. That's how she describes him. Um, Damien is like, um, I guess there's like, like floors and then there's like a room leading up to the attic and then there's the attic and there's like stairs i don't know they don't really describe the layout of the house very well um and uh damien is in the room below the attic he is hard with muscles clinton is steel in body and personality uh bunny is textbook nerd with a mangled arm all the boys call her beautiful at dinner. They tell her the plan to respect her and take care of her and, you know, treating her like a human being with emotions and not acting like toxic people. So I like the boys. They're all pretty cool. Sam gets a little chapter. He is also horny for Morgan. All of them want to sleep with her. Uh, when she came into the house, apparently they were all like, like vibrations. They were all able to feel it. And she's like releasing pheromones like... Like some sort of um i don't know fish i don't i don't know what animals release pheromones like that maybe like a cat <laughs> i don't know um bunny paints and he like paints a protection charm on her face and the way morgan describes it all this is most of it is from morgan's perspective she describes it as being very sensual damien does metalworking on the roof because i guess you can't i don't know about metalworking i guess you can't design a room for that or something like that so he makes her a ring and like one of them the model type he takes pictures and in his pictures like the streets of manhattan are desolate and there are no people and there's like a shadow over top of the place it's coming like the apocalypse is going to happen that's what all the boys are like predicting like pointing to it's coming and it involves morgan anyway um clint plays the cello he's the music one so he goes to uh she goes, she follows the music and she goes and like sits with him and he's like the first one to actually like do something with her. Um, I think he just kisses her though. I don't remember. Um, Morgan meets with her graduate advisor. Oh yeah, there's a school going, story going on here. Um, project is going to be done with Anita Cross in order to maintain her scholarship. Morgan didn't apply for the scholarship to the house and the professor, the graduate advisor stiffens at the idea of the house 
Um, I take it those are the bad guys. There aren't really bad guys yet in the story. It's just, it's all just sort of, the antagonist up to this point is just sort of like a nebulous concept. Um, at home, Sam finds her outside, they chat, he messes with her a little bit, and, like, he messes with her a little bit, and, uh, the whole house feels her orgasm. It's, it's really weird. Anyway, um... Anita Cross comes to the house to, like, see her, and she sees one of the boys, and Morgan is, like, jealous of her, like, being around the boys because they're her. She's, like, totally on board for living with four or five really hot guys, which, I mean, what straight girl wouldn't be? Anyway, um, Morgan knows something's happening. She's not stupid. She goes to Damien, and, uh... She goes to Damien, and he's, like, the, he's the second one to, like, do something with her. And I, I wrote that I affectionately refer to it as a mouthy down Southie. So, I have great hope for Morgan. She's a pretty good character. Like, she has motivation. She's clearly not stupid. And, um, I hope that the boy from back home comes to visit, and she's like, You missed your shot, dude! You gotta shoot your shot! <laughs> And um, then she goes to Dylan, and Dylan has been studying Morgan, and he, like, knows who she is because he's a history major, so he knows her entire history, and she's like, why? And he's like, you know who we are. And, uh, yeah, so th she has powers, and they're awakening. Here's what happened to her parents. Morgan has been writing this story about a little girl named Maverick who is friends with these crows. They don't like it when she goes out, and they try to keep her at home and keep her safe, and there's a cat. Nobody likes the cat. The cat is the reason Bunny's arm is all fucked up. And the cat gets her to open some sort of gate. And it releases monsters. And it kills her parents. And the four, five of them have to leave. Because, I guess, like, they accidentally failed. So, yeah. And, um... They lost their bird form. It's kind of weird that technically that means that she's sleeping with birds. But, whatever. Um... <laughs> That's Morgan's past, and it could happen again if they don't stop it. They can stop it, though. Morgan is... Her name is spelled M-O-R-G-A-N, but she's actually M-O-R-R-I-G-A-N. And uh, the five boys are meant to stop her from opening the gate. So pause for a moment. That second Morgan, the second spelling of Morgan that I spelled... Uh, if you do not know who she is, she is an Irish goddess associated with war, destiny, fate, and death. She often appears as a crow, not a raven. The birds are ravens. Um, did I say that she was friends with crows? I didn't mean to say crows. I meant to say ravens. Um, sometimes she's called the great or phantom queen. She's also a shapeshifter and an ominous sign to those who see her before battle. Anyway, um, from what I've gathered... Morgan can't control this power by herself, and that's what the harm is for. It's, it's the author's excuse to write a sexy book about uh, a girl getting to sleep with all these guys because th they help her release the energy, I guess, through orgasms. I mean, that's one way to do it. And by doing that, they keep Morgan's energy under control, and the world gets to keep spinning. Um... There's a story of the goddess Morgan constantly being rejected by a man who she loved until she started a war. And I guess that's kind of what is going on here, sort of. Because Morgan, the character girl, she doesn't have very much luck with dudes. So, yeah. Um, Morgan, Morgan has to choose one of them to be her mate. Morgan doesn't want to choose one of them to be her mate. So she says that they all have 30 days to, like, woo her and then uh, she'll choose. So I guess the next six books takes place over 30 days. That's a lot. Um, also why I feel like this book probably should have been three or four books, because I guess I understand why this book ended where it did, but still. Um, so there are kind of only three points that I have in this book. Uh, the sex stuff, it's much better in this book than it was in the Delectable Lady Day Cell. I actually have a sense of what everyone looks like. I also like Sam. And, like, I excuse not knowing what Morgan really looks like to the fact that it's in first person. Delectable Lady Day Cell is in third person. So we should get a description of what this woman looks like besides me just thinking that she looks like a middle-aged housewife. 
because they they describe her as as like sexy and stuff like that. And when you are a femme fatale, <sighs> I hate that book. Anyway, um, yeah, like people don't just randomly describe themselves like in their everyday thoughts and thinkings. At least I don't. So, um, having the cover be of a woman is better in this book because. That gives a sense of what she looks like, and it also doesn't confuse the time period, because I still don't know what time period that last book takes place in. Whatever. Um, the story part. I'm fine with the way the story's told. Like, this is the beginning, and you have to set up both the sex stuff, the fact that these guys- the sex stuff, the fact that these guys are not toxic, and this is actually going to be a good situation for Morgan, and you also have to set up the fact that the apocalypse is coming, and Morgan could be the cause of it. So. I think that's why we don't get very much of the antagonist in this. I'm assuming that it's the professor. I don't know. Um, the apocalypse stuff is very on the nose. And, like, it doesn't bug me that much. But I still kind of... I guess that's why, because of the point that I just said about it being, um... Like, you have, th you have three separate things that you need to set up in this book. So I guess that's why that's like that. Um, it's very short and... There's not a whole lot to talk about, so I can overlook it being, um, like, the no-world-building part. Uh, in terms of where this book ended up, I still like... I, I, I like it more than I like The Dragon's Champion, but that's only because, like... The Dragon's Champion just has a lot going on, and the middle part really brings it down. So, yeah. Um, what's next? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I like it. If you're into sexy books, I would give this one a shot because it's got a plot. So, 